Order. When you won't. Order. When you won't the Honourable the Member's time resources. has expired. The question is that the motion be agreed to. This is Treasurer speaking to the. Uh, Mr. Uh, the Honourable the Treasurer. Mr. Mr. Speaker. Order. What a, what a lightweight performer from a couple of consummate lightweights. From a couple of consummate lightweights. Order. You all sat there last night while I reamed you out point by point. <laughs> reamed you out. You were sitting up there. Under Order. The old bow ties. The steam was coming up when you sat before an industry group as I took you through the absolute stupidity of your policy positions and against the history of the changes. And why do you think almost to a person, every business person in the place knew everything I said was dead right? Dead right. Order. I know what an absolute joke of a party you are. What an absolute joke of a party you are. And there we have, let's see, you can see how edgy and how flaky the shadow treasurer is. Last night he got reamed out over there. Today he's up here putting on this act. Last week he's attacking journalists personally, calling Connor. them Pavlov's dogs. He's attacking journalists, saying they're going to get them when he gets into office and they'll cut them off from all information. This is the sort of little boy stamp your feet stuff you, Order. Get, you get from a financial market yuppie when you shoehorn him into parliament. <laughs> this is the sort of stuff when you get for someone unfitted unfitted for a major public office job and who is shoehorned onto the front bench because of an absolute absence of talent, an absolute absence of talent, who comes in here, who at best was a second stringer in the financial markets, wouldn't be good enough to make the A grade, a second stringer in the financial markets, who gets a bit of a bashing. Actually, you got a reasonable reception to your policy on day one from the press, but no, on the end of day one, who's up there attacking journalists and being entirely flaky and edgy? You guessed it, the edgy, flaky member for Wentworth, the shadow treasurer, who's up here today. And he's up here talking about his policy and what, how we should the respond. Flinders. Here's a government that's carried the burden of change in the post-war years from you indolent, useless Liberals, you indolent, useless Liberals, and what you've got, you've got a policy to throw two and a half billion away in tax expenditures, and you think it, it's going to cover you in some sort of glory. We waited two and a half years for you to bring down a tax policy. There's no rates, not one specification of rates. We still don't know whether the rate will be 39 per cent, when, what the bottom rates will be, nothing. All we've got is the usual the Liberals doing their usual thing trying to buy votes for an election. In your, in your conservatism, last time it was John Howard with, with $7.8 billion worth of bribes. This time you've had the decency to cut that in half. You're now down to about $3 billion worth of bribes. And then, and then you've got, he's got the hide to say our fiscal policy will be 22 per cent of outlays. That's like us. We end up with this enormous level of government spending, 30.7 per cent of GDP. We finally rebuild the building, a proper building, and then it's like building the Empire State Building and this joker jumping in the lift, going to the top and putting a brick on top <laughs> and saying, look what we've done, ours is bigger. <laughs> ours is bigger, you mug, you mug. That, and Order, Mr. the Deputy Treasurer Speaker, might withdraw that remark. I withdraw, Mr Deputy Speaker. And then we get down to the the real recital, the fan, but I mean the height of them, his 22 per cent of outlays, and they've attacked and ripped and torn at every spending decision the government's made for seven years. My colleagues and I, who sit on the front bench, five of us who sat there for three months a year, twice a year, for seven years cutting outlays, it's now his. He's expropriated it because he's going to add, add 140 million, he says, to a budget of 90,000 million. I mean, the pathetic, the pathetic quality of that remark. I mean, the shame, the shame of it all. I mean, you just should. Look, the thing about you lot, you've just got no shame. Maybe you're just a breed. You're just a breed. When you pop into this world, you're born with no shame. You know, maybe you're just a breed. Order. Mr Deputy Speaker, but then, but then on the real issue of the current account, you read all this, and the big problem is the current account deficit. Order. The real problem is the current account deficit and, and debt and inflation, but what's the solution? To give away two and a half billion dollars worth of tax expenditures. That's it. I mean, and spend it. Yeah, cut it and spend it. I mean, that's the solution. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. 
but as I said last night, the real, the real Lulu in the whole thing, the key line, is the third last paragraph on page 22. By reducing inflation and shifting the weight off monetary policy, they'll lower interest rates. That is, we will have lower inflation, but in the company of lower interest rates. Now, this would be a world first. They're actually going to have inflation lower without the help of interest rates, because interest rates will be lower too. And they'll get inflation lower by having enterprise bargaining. Well, I mean, there wouldn't be an economist, an economic institute, the OECD, the IMF. Nobody would regard that statement seriously. They regard that as a joke. And to think that you as a party, an alternative party of government, professing some capacity, would come along and put a piece of rubbish, an absolute piece of nonsense like that into a policy that you're going to deregulate the well, labour market, Connor. then all of a sudden there's going to be the great leap down in wages. Growth's going to go on, but wages are going to leap down. I mean, it's just unbelievable trite nonsense. Order. Just trite nonsense. I mean, you wouldn't have a wages policy. You heard what the MTIA said to you last night. They don't want any toe-to-toe -to -toe contests. They want a mature industrial structure, an arbitration commission presiding over gradual change that can be afforded. You, you heard what they had to say, the people in the real world, to all of you. They dumped on you. That's what they did, dumped on you. And I know you're all whinging about the reception you got there last night. The fact of the matter is, I mean, you went to an industry group and they dumped on you and you, you cried like stuck pigs all night because you thought it was a Labor audience. You thought it was a Labor group. I mean, you were pathetic because here you are, you're facing an industry group and what do they do with you? They Order. work well with you. And finally, of course, when, when you really get down to it, you produce your policy, you sat there for months going over it, and what's the finance department say? It's got an $800 million error in it. An $800 million error. That is, the, the, two, the two departments administering these programs, the Department of Social Security, well, just hang on, the Department Order. of Social Security and the Department of Finance, that's the, that's the department delivering the programs and the one monitoring them, they go through it and say it's got an $800 million error. Now, we all know it was about 1000 or $1,100 million in reality. In other words, you got into Howard and, and, and the member for McKellar because he had a 19 per cent error in the policy, but, but Stone and Professor Hughes and the rest of them drop up with a 31 per cent error. I mean, you couldn't even get that much right. And then, of course, then yesterday, yesterday we really find what your real policy is. We find what your real policy is on childcare, and that is you'll knock off the fee Remember relief. We find out what your real policy is on childcare. You'll knock off the fee relief, and you're going to reduce the fee relief by the value of the rebate. In other words, you give $20 on the one hand and take it on the other. You're going to take away government, the growth in government centres, and throw the whole lot to the private economy. In other words, all the mothers out there ought to know that they'll be ha being handled by private business in childcare, charging them about 100 a week, which you can now afford to give them $11.70. So they'll be charged $100 a week, and you'll give them $11.70. Now, you haven't got, look, you haven't got a ghost of a show. Imagine you lot managing, you say there's a debt crisis. I mean, imagine you lot managing a crisis. Could you imagine it? I mean, you'd be just, you can't, you can't even manage yourself in this place, manage, managing a crisis. And here you are, Order. you know, you've got, you're talking about the debt and the, the, the current account crisis, but when you get your big chance to really do something about it, what do you say? We'll have a weaker fiscal policy, we'll have a non-wage policy, a cave-in like the pilots with enterprise bargaining, and basically what we'll do, we'll screw interest rates up to 25 or 27 per cent to cut the heart out of inflation. I mean, in the end, you're the same dismal old, you're the same dismal, thoughtless old crowd that you were in 1980-81. You're back to the same policies as 1980-81. You just get in there, lift interest rates, destroy business, and to try and destroy inflation. You haven't got a ghost of a show. This is not a policy. It's a sham. It's a joke. It has no macroeconomic structure. Andrew is laughing there. If the Prime Ministership was ever li lifted on him, he would quake in his boots. Quake in his boots. He wants what he always wanted in life, a near victory. Andrew's best result is to nearly win. 
He loves to nearly win because winning carries responsibility, and the one thing he shies off responsibility like Dracula from a wooden stake. He's run back that far from any Order. real responsibility. Mr Order. Speaker, the proposition's a joke, a joke, and the Order. government will be opposing it. Order.